we often come across the term stress. We have seen it in the news, heard about it on the radio. Our friends, co-workers confide in us when they feel stressed. We ourselves have told people that we are stressed. Some of you might be stressed right now. But what is stress really? What are the biological processes underlying it? What are the long-term effects? And more importantly, how do we cope with stress? Join me as I search for answers to these questions and more. In this episode, we explore what happens to us biologically when we are stressed. We will also explore chronic stress and burnout. Heads up, take good notes of points 1 and 2 because I will be connecting them with point 3. The Selye's General Adaptation Syndrome The first model of stress comes from Selye who suggested the Selye's General Adaptation Syndrome. There are three stages. The first stage is the alarm stage. This is when the person recognizes a threat and enters the fight or flight response. We'll get to that in just a moment. The resistance stage occurs when the stress is prolonged and the body is aroused and stabilized. The exhaustion stage is where the body's resources are depleted. This is where the person is prone to diseases. Now, irrespective of the stressor, the basic progression of the adaptation is the same. The fast response and the slow response. Of course, with modern science, we have a more detailed explanation as to what happens when a person faces a stressor. There is a fast response and a slow response. The fast response or the fight or flight response or the sympathoadrenomedullary axis or SAM axis is a physiological reaction to a stressor that prepares the organism for attacking, fight or fleeing, flight, the danger. The sympathetic division of the nervous system is responsible for arousing the body for action by increasing the heart rate and blood pressure. The hormone responsible for this is epinephrine, formerly known as adrenaline, which is released from the adrenal medulla of the adrenal gland located above the kidneys. The slow response, which is also known as the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis or HPA axis. The hypothalamus is the part of the brain responsible for temperature regulation, eating, drinking and sexual behavior. The hypothalamus stimulates the pituitary gland which in turn makes the adrenal cortex release cortisol. Cortisol turns off all bodily functions that are not required while dealing with a stressor. These include but not limited to inhibiting insulin causing an increase in energy due to the blood glucose levels. Inhibition of the production of the growth hormone, shutting down the reproductive functions and decreasing immune system functions. Take good note of this point. Chronic stress. Up until now, the examples of stress have been that of acute stress, that is a reaction of the organism to an immediate stressor. Once the acute threat has passed, the response becomes inactivated. But what if a stressful event becomes a permanent or a chronic part of a person's environment that are not short-lived, like poverty, a high-stress work environment? Well, in such cases, the person can either habituate, get used to it, or develop chronic stress. The sources of chronic stress include severely traumatic or stressful events, Chronic stressful conditions like poverty, high workload at work, safety hazards, inadequate career progression, bullying at school or workplace. This can be either physical, mental or sexual. So what happens when a person is chronically stressed? Now this is where we connect points 1 and 2. Remember the three stages of the Selye General Adaptation Syndrome? Well, during chronic stress, the body is constantly on alert, that is the resistance stage, and the inability to recover quickly from a stress response can have significant consequences. This is where exhaustion happens, that is the person is not capable of further resistance and is prone to diseases. 
Let's take a look at it biologically. The excessive and long-term discharge of epinephrine during a fast response can cause an elevated abnormal heart rhythms and neurochemical imbalances. Prolonged cortisol secretion during a slow response has been linked to immune system dysfunction, hippocampus dysfunction and depression. In addition, chronic activation of the slow response has been linked with increased abdominal fat that is the high waist to hip ratio. This in turn makes stress exacerbate the effects of diseases. So folks, chronic stress is bad news. It invariably leads to diseases. Burnout An indicator of chronic stress that is common amongst working professionals is burnout. Burnout can be defined as the state of emotional, mental and physical exhaustion caused by chronic and repeated stress. The symptoms of burnout include depression, cynicism, apathy, lethargy, personal detachment from one's job or situation, and a reduced sense of accomplishment. Working professionals, especially those working in the service industry, like doctors, teachers, mental health professionals, are more prone to being burnt out. Having said that, burnout is not necessarily bound to the workplace. It can also affect our personal lives too. Burnout can be seen amongst parents, romantic partners and caretakers. Alright, we are done with the science lesson today, but the stress series is not over yet. We still have to explore one more important topic. How people cope with stress? Or better, are there any stress-busting techniques? We will explore that in part 3. So in case you haven't done so yet, don't forget to hit the subscribe button so that you are notified when the next part is up. Well, that's it from me and I'll see you in the next one.